good day, folks. Here's the news for today's episode with B. Vanessa. Japanese Prime Minister attends NATO EU G7 summit in Brussels. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida met with European Union Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and European Union Council President Charles Michel in Brussels. Kishida, who also joined the Group of Seven meeting in Brussels, had expressed solidarity with Europe last February in the lead up to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Japan then decided to share the surplus of its LNG supply with Europe and Kishida and von der Leyen pledged to cooperate to ensure energy security. Japan has revoked Russia's most favored nation trade status banned exports of certain goods to the country and frozen assets of about 100 Russian individuals, banks and other organizations after the invasion, which Moscow calls a special military operation. Japan-European Union partnerships also involve the European Union Global Gateway, which aims to strengthen rules-based and sustainable global connectivity. Myanmar junta chief vows no talks with opposition terrorists. Myanmar's junta chief said the military will not negotiate with terrorist opposition forces, vowing to annihilate them during a speech on Armed Forces Day, as opponents of last year's coup vowed they will also fight on. The military, known as the Tatmadaw, celebrated a parade of troops and weapons in the capital Naypyidaw for the second year since overthrowing the elected government of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi. Junta leader Ming Oholein, in his speech, rejected any talks with terrorists at Five Point Peace Plan by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations calls for talks on all sides, but so far has seen little progress. <laughs> The junta accuses opposition armed forces of killing civilians and security forces in its resistance campaign, while activists says the military has killed hundreds in crackdowns since the coup. Myanmar has been plagued by violence since the military seized power, appending a decade of tentative democratic and economic reforms. More than 1,700 people have been killed and almost 13,000 arrested, according to the Rights Group's Assistance Association for Political Prisoners. Anti-coup protesters came out on streets in Myanmar, opposing the coup, carrying signs saying, uproot the fascist military. Philippines and United States start joint military drills amid South China Sea tensions. United States exercise Balika. The opening ceremony for a two-week military exercise between 9,000 U.S. and Filipino troops was held on Monday as China continues to impose its presence over the South China Sea. The annual Balikatan, or shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder exercise, was cancelled in 2020 because of the pandemic, but resumed last year with scaled-down activities involving only 1,700 troops with minimal physical contact. This combined joint exercise is an opportunity for the United States and the Philippines to reaffirm their commitment to even more robust ties and to a relationship that remains highly relevant as the world faces new and continuing challenges, said Heather Variava, the charge the affairs of the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines. Easing COVID-19 restrictions allowed the full resumption of the joint exercises, which includes amphibious operations and live fire training to the test operational readiness and war fighting capabilities using newly acquired equipment. Indonesia's Muslim stock up at markets ahead of Ramadan amid surge in prices. As the holy month of Ramadan approaches in Jakarta, many shoppers are holding back on buying food supplies like beef, chili and oil at local wet markets amid a surge in prices fueled by higher global oil prices and shortfall of crude palm oil. Ramadan will begin on April in Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim country, while in previous years markets were crowded with residents stocking up on essentials, it is slightly different this year. Uh, 
otomatis sekarang pembelinya jadi menurun. Naturally, now the number of buyers decreased because prices of daily necessities have not been able to stabilize. From the past month, the prices started rising steadily and have never decreased. Sebulan ini udah harga udah mulai naik terus, belum pernah ada turun. Earlier in March, President Joko Widodo warned the fallout from the war in Ukraine could disturb domestic price stability and questioned how long the government could keep local fuel prices steady. Indonesian food prices typically rise ahead of the Muslim fasting month of Ramadan, which is further compounded this year by a shortage of crude pulp oil leading to a rise in cooking oil prices. Very expensive, not only expensive. Even yesterday, cooking oil was not available in one market. However, while the higher prices may be daunting, some Indonesian spirits for the Ramadan season are not damped and they remain hopeful. We hope that for the upcoming Ramadan fasting, things will return to normal, unlike the previous years, which took place during a pandemic. Hopefully, it will return to normal and God willing, our economy will hopefully improve. Bank Indonesia had said that the government will mitigate upside risks to inflation by aiming to control volatile food inflation within a 3% to 5% range and authorities will ensure supply and distribution of foodstuff ahead of religious festivities. Philippines evacuate residents as volcano spews mile-high plume. A small but restive volcano in the south of the Philippine capital spewed a 1.5-kilometer plume prompting authorities to raise an alert level and evacuate nearly 1,000 residents. The alert for the Taal volcano, about 70 kilometers south of the central Manila, it was increased to level 3 from level 2 on the level 5 scale, which the Seismology and Volcanology Agency said meant there is magmatic intrusion at the main crater that may further drive succeeding eruptions. The disaster agency said authorities evacuated around 800 to 900 persons living in the five lakeside communities near the volcano. The evacuees include fishermen and fish cage workers in the lake. Tal is one of the world's smallest active volcanoes. Despite standing at only 311 meters, it can be deadly and an eruption in 1911 killed more than 1,300 people. Dyson to invest 1.1 billion in Singapore as part of global plan. Dyson, the inventor of the Bagels vacuum cleaner, said it will invest 1.5 billion dollar in Singapore over the next four years, the newest phase of a 4.9 billion global investment plan. The company also launched its new global headquarters in the restored St. James Power Station in Singapore, where it plans to hire more than 250 additional engineers and scientists. The position will span robotics, machine learning, high-speed electric digital motors, energy storage, and more. Singapore is a hub for Dyson's research and engineering teams, as well as commercial advanced manufacturing and supply chain operations. It has more than 1,400 staff in the country, including 560 engineers and scientists. Singapore is the most nurturing of places to do business. The support we have received from your government, as well as Swan Jin and his team at the EDB, has been in a class of its own. Okay, yeah, yeah. The company became a household name for developing slickly designed products, ranging from hand dryers and air purifiers to hair care tools and vacuums. Tyson, a billionaire Brexit supporter, announced plans in 2019 to move his company's head office to Singapore to be closer to its fastest growing markets, sparking a backlash at home. And that's the whole news for today. Thank you very much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a nice weekend.